Pittsburgh Modular Super Superbooth. How's the voice? The voice is a little rough today. It's been a tough couple days, um, but we're we're plowing through. Yeah, it's loud down here, but kind of a lot of fun. It's it's been great so far. Superbooth in Berlin. It's an amazing place. It's been a blast. Absolutely. So um, you've got the life forms here, which is a, a really cool kind of uh, single voice type of uh, setup. Yeah, we're, we're the Lifeform systems, they've been out now for a couple months. We announced them at NAMM, and the response has been huge for these things. And I think one of the reasons why is, if you look at it, it's a synthesizer. You can understand, it. there's a keyboard, there's a full voice up top. The nice thing though, it's fully patchable. So you can start routing things around very easily. Internally, the synth voice, it's patched. So. The, uh, the waveforms from the oscillator are pre-patched to the mixer, so you don't have to worry about that right away. The mixer's patched to the filter, that goes to the VCA. So the simple um, monosynth voice is already there for you. You don't have to worry about that. When you get it out of the box, if you're new to modular, you can plug it in, you can plug it in with a MIDI cable, or you can hook up the touch keyboard and play on the output, and you're making music with it right away. Because everything is integrated and everything is sort of a curated experience, we include a very large manual that you can download and understand what you're doing. Because we know exactly what's in your system, we can give patch examples, we can explain how the oscillator works, how the filter works, to really get you started on the right foot. So you're making music right away, you're not staring at this wall of modular going, I have, what did I just buy? I, I have no idea what to do here. This gets you right in and you're making music. The nice thing is, because it is fully modular, the oscillators, the mixer, the filter, the ADSR, they can break apart then. So as you add additional modules, if you decide to grow your system, you can use your ADSR over here, you can use your oscillator over here, your MIDI you can use to track another oscillator. So it, it becomes the core of your modular system. You don't outgrow it, you just expand it. It's the gateway drug, right? We like to think of it as the gateway drug, yes. Yeah. So um, explain, I was really interested about the, uh, ke the keyboard and the sequencer. So an interesting kind of uh, design. And how is it, so it's a step sequencer and an arpeggiator as well, right? It's a, it's a pressure sensitive keyboard, and I can demonstrate that. We'll add some pressure here to the VCA go to monophonic mode. So it's pressure sensitive, it's a capacitive touch keyboard. You can very easily change the pressure sensitivity to whatever your music style is, whatever your playing style is. As the gig goes longer and you start really pushing it, you can change the sensitivity. So you're getting the same response from your instrument the entire time. It does work in monophonic mode, so you can play it as a monophonic keyboard. It has all the responses built in, so if you want last note priority, first note priority, high note priority, with or without re-trigger, if you want to emulate an old ARP or an old mode, you can do that with the keyboard response on it. What, what's with the presets as well? I just kind of, um, not something you often see on the modular kit. What's the, the, the preset, it's, the way it works is because this section here is actually analog, you can set four voltages to anywhere from zero to five volts. And what that gives you is four voltage presets to select from. So if you set them sort of separately here, you can then select the voltage, ah, the so preset. They, they could be modulation depths or, or... Absolutely. So if we're playing and we patch this into, say, the filter cutoff, And you can select them manually, or we can you can run through them like a sequencer. This sequencer is using the same clock as the internal arpeggiator and the main step sequencer, but you can clock it faster, slower, oh, in different really, intervals. That's really neat. Really, really a, a deep system, and they're great for modulation because it is analog. You don't have 
the quantization stepping that you have with the rest of the, the keyboard, which you want the quantization when you're doing pitches, but if you're doing modulation, maybe not as much. So it does have an arpeggiator as well. You have a quick arpeggiator running here. And the way it works, it's as played, so. You hold, the, press the notes, it'll play. You can press hold. It'll play forever. I'd imagine you're selling a number of these things on their own as well, <laughs> the, the, we the actual keyboard. The response for these has been really great. People, you know, with larger rack systems, immediately understand that, oh, this could be the control center for their live rig or their control center for their studio rig. That's what we designed it for. Um, I perform out once a month or so, and what I wanted was a centralized location where I could control everything going on in my rig. So that gives me the arpeggiator, the 64-step sequencers, um, the preset sequencer over here, and then the trigger section as well, which is great. The triggers are fully, you have six different programmable choices you can select from. They can act as pitch bend, they can also act as gates or latches, so you can use them essentially as on-off switches for various things in your system. They can be drum triggers, they also can be random pressure sensitive random burst generators. So as you press it, you can see this one right now is being a clock divider, and as you press it, the divisions get longer, and as you step out, they get shorter again. And it, then the last one is a pressure sensitive burst generator, so it's, it's very chaotic. And as you press it, it gets more chaotic, but it's always some division of the beat, so it remains very musical. All right, so you could use that for kind of fills or unusual. So yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. This thing, it's extremely deep, but it's only one layer down, so everything is available right at your fingertips. You can see there's a lot of buttons on the interface, and we do do some shifting, so you hold edit, you can change some parameters, but that's as deep as it gets. Everything is right in front of you, instant access to what you're doing. And I'm noticing we're hearing, uh, are they duophonic or paraphonic? Because you're hearing, to, you can control each oscillator separately on the actual, um, the SV one, right, as the, well? The KB one itself can be uh, monophonic or duophonic, with full duophonic pressure sensitivity as well. The SV one is a monophonic synth, but it is dual oscillator. And because it's, it's, from the modular school, the oscillators are fully sweeping, so you can set them anywhere you want them. There's no octave switches. You can go from sub-oscillator all the way up ultrasonic and anywhere in between. The oscillator cores in the SV-1 are a new oscillator core for us. We decided to start from scratch on this one and really come up with something new. We wanted um, a bigger, beefier sine wave and a more controllable blade wave. Blade waves are a um, proprietary waveform. It's a modulatable saw wave. So I can demonstrate that very fast. A really cool sounding waveform. So this is the blade wave with no modulation. As we bring in the modulation. It's kind of sine saw, sort of, or sine triangle. Kind it's, of it. it's, a, it's a saw wave that modulates this way. So you get, you get, at lower modulation rates, you can get sort of a chorus type effect out of it. And if we patch in the second oscillator here into the modulation input, you can get almost a ring mod type effect out of it. But because we're modulating this way and not this way, it tracks still volt per octave, so it's still a playable oscillator, even though you're getting these great sort of obtuse tones out of it. And what's the filter in this guy? Filter's a state variable filter. It's the same filter, that, the filter core that we've had in our Pittsburgh modular filter, the larger module. Except we tweaked it a little bit, we've added a little bit, and I'll pull this 
couple patch cables out here. We'll go back to a, a standard saw wave and just for We'll add a little, change the sequence up a little bit too. There. We've added quite a bit more resonance to it. It's not losing a lot of bottom end. I mean, it, it doesn't lose it at all. It's always nice that was a design decision we made was we wanted, instead of dropping the level when you add the resonance, you keep the bottom end and the low end there. So it just gets a little bit louder, but it just gets nasty. Can you push the signal hard into it to drive it? I mean, is it, is it generally, do, do you have that? Oh yeah, I hear it. Yeah. The great thing about a state variable filter topology is you can theoretically have infinite resonance without self-oscillation. So you can really get that wet, drippy stuff without worrying about the filter starting to self-oscillate on you and really go out of control. If you pull back the resonance you rein it in, you still have a really nice, warm, creamy filter sweep, which is something that's always been the goal for us. We don't want our filters to have a sweet spot. We want any, you can just grab the knob and turn it. That's why it's a big knob, and it's all going to sound really good. Excellent. So um, this is, uh, as you know, it's available now, right? So we've been out for a couple of months. What's the, what's the pricing structure for uh, either or both or the case? Tell us about the money. The pricing, we really wanted people to be able to get into this um, great two oscillator analog synth. The Lifeforms, the SV1 module itself is $699 US. Um, the keyboard is uh, $499 US. And we call this our System 201, the Cutie system is $15.99 US. And it comes with case, power supply, modules, set of patch cables, all the manuals, everything you need to be doing modular synthesis right out of the box. Thank you very much, Richard. Absolutely.